Good morning PPM system members and a big welcome to today's live tutorial where my focus is going to be getting organized or what I like to refer to is some desk or office styling. You're currently listening to Debbie Palmer, Managing Director of the PPM Group. Now if you have webcam access, hello, there is a real person behind the computer screen. So today is a, a, a brief session, it goes for about 25, 30 minutes. Now I have noticed from our list that we've got a couple of people joining for the very first time. So just a brief review of the delivery of the training. So you'll be able to hear my voice, you'll be able to see the PowerPoint screen, but during the delivery of the training, we will not be able to interact with any questions. Um, as a VIP member, um, part of your, your membership is you have direct support, access via email or telephone at any time if you've got any question. No question is too big or too small. We want to hear from you. Okay, so I'm going to minimise my webcam, turn it off only because it slows down the internet speed. So let's get started and that is a place for everything and everything in its place. So what I would suggest for everyone listening today is we make this our time to commit to get organized. And that might be going back to your workstation, tidying it up, getting rid of the coffee cup from yesterday, the bin that's overflowing, strategically place everything, and I talk about that in property management safety tips, how you should have your workstation set up. But just do a big refresh and tidy of the office. Um, one of my favorite sayings is a tidy, clutter-free workspace should equal a tidy, clutter-free mind. Um, unless you're like my, my mother, I remember going into their business often and her desk was just full of paper everywhere and I used to say, Mum, how can you work like that? And she would go, well, I know exactly where this piece of paper is and I know where this quote is and this invoice is. But honestly, a fresh start and you'll have better focus. So as I said, today is about, now there's, there's no set rule for how to set up and structure your, your office environment. What I'm going to be doing today is just giving you some tips and ideas of what some members embrace and then you can tweak it, whether you use filing trays, um, TID, folders, pigeonholes, um, filing cabinets, whatever it may be. But the first one we're going to look at is what I call our 1 to 31 filing cabinet. Now, this particular PPM system tutorial is a little different to all of the others. There was a link to download these PowerPoints because what I want you to do following this tutorial is utilize the PowerPoint as a template, get a highlighter pen, and then cross off everything to make sure that you do have a place for all outstanding work. Because what you generally find is once it's hidden away or put into the filing cabinet, it can often be forgotten. And we want to create an office environment where if you go on annual leave or if you're unwell one day, then someone else can step into your role and know where that outstanding work is. So the 1 to 31 is a filing cabinet, and then you would have the 1 to 31 tabs, as you can see up on the screen there. Now that represents the days of the month. So today being the 9th, you would open up your filing cabinet, look behind number 9, and you would see all of the tenant moving in and tenant vacating packs, which I'm going to show you those very shortly. Now. Some agencies that have larger rent rolls actually have two filing cabinets. They have one for the tenants moving in and then they have a separate one for the tenants vacating. But if you're a smaller agency, you should find that both of those will fit into the one filing cabinet. Now, some people don't like this manual setup, as I said, within the agency. You can do it however you want. You can either, either 
sorry, you can even utilize your computer tasking. So the move impacts, you will find these, and that's why I've got the PowerPoint minimized at the moment. So here you've got envelope cover sheets. So you can see on the launch panel there, one, two, three, four, five, six down, is where you'll find the cover sheets. Now, the size of those is a C4. Now, a C4 is just a little larger than an A4 to allow you to put more paper in there. Now, I know some agencies don't have any paper. It's all electronic. But some agencies, they'll hold the important documents like the tenancy agreement and the condition report and the bond lodgement and the receipts, etc. We also had a member request several years ago for a key return envelope. And I'm going to explain those shortly. So the key return envelope is a C5 size. You can fold it up and put it into the envelope if you're posting your vacate information to the tenant. So the tenant vacating envelope looks like this. So remember, it's under our envelope cover sheets, all of them. Now you can staple, you can glue, you can photocopy, however you want to do it, this particular sheet onto the envelope. You can also make modifications, but this is a summary of all of the tenant's detail that you may need to glance at quickly when the tenant vacates the property. So it's this envelope cover sheet that will be sitting in your 1 to 31 filing cabinet with all of the documents that may have been in the tenant's folder. The next one is your tenant moving in envelope, same concept paste or photocopy to the front of the envelope and then as I said today if you look behind tab number nine you might see four tenant moving in envelopes two tenant vacating envelopes and it's just a really quick easy reference point to know where the information is you've also got a property lessor envelope so that's if the property's been sold or you're no longer managing the property that's all of the owner's information that goes inside that envelope. And then the last one we have is our key return envelope. Now this was requested because many member agencies were turning up to work in the morning and keys had just been um, popped through the key chute and it had no address and they didn't know who it um, related to. So this is just something that you send out with your vacate information, the tenant completes it, and it also prompts them to make sure that you've, you've got your exit condition report, your carpet cleaning receipt, all the property keys and remotes, pool cleaning receipt if applicable, and pest control receipt. Um, now once again, you can make modifications to any of those documents. Now I'm going to show you now, and I'm not going to open up, I'm going to go through the launch panel. So third folder up from the bottom, we've got our tenant reference database. Now this is a link on your tenant breaking of agreement checklist, abandonment and vacating. So there'll be a link directly to this tenant reference and archive management system and it's just a record of all of the tenant details. So it will become a very powerful database in one year, two year, three year time, three years time when you get a call from an outside agent or landlord wanting a reference. So it's fairly straightforward. You would, I'm not going to do it now, but you would just click on a new record, type in all of the information, tenant's name, approved occupant, um, their weekly rent, start, expiry, vacate date, were they issued any breaches, um, they were issued a breach for received constant complaints about dog barking. Now this is the one that relates to the archiving envelopes that I was just talking about. Because if you are archiving paper within your agency, all you need to do is have archive box number one, fill that up, move on to box two. Now what this is saying, if you're looking for Peter Smith's information from 4 Blue Street, you will find it in archive box 
number 14. So you've also got this search function up here where you can search on property address or landlord name. Are we going to give them a reference? Have we listed them on a, a tenant database agency, whether it's NTD or Ticker? When did we list them? Why did we list them? List them. And it also monitors debt. So this particular tenant left with an outstanding debt of $1,100. And once again, it's a very powerful database where a tenant 12 months down the track after they've vacated the property might ring up and say, okay, I need to clear this debt. I can't rent anywhere. You go, you search their name, and then you tell them it's $1,100. This is the reason for it. And then they can pay it off. Super easy, the date, and then exit, and you don't have to save. It automatically saves as you type it in. Okay, so that's our Tenant Reference Archive Management Database. The next one that you might like to do in getting organised is to prepare tenant moving impacts, tenant vacating packs, and your new management packs, so they're all ready to go. Now, you will find what goes into those packs under procedures, office procedures, and then you'll see it there, tenant moving in pack, tenant vacating pack, and the new management. And once again, you can go in and modify those, but it's just a template. I would also have a document and that would be putting, actually let's just open up tenant moving in pack. So what I would do is actually print this out. Oh, close that. Print this document out and then place it into a clear plastic sleeve and then put it in five from the back which is a reminder that you've only got five left and they need to be topped up again. Okay, the next one that's really important is your reception forms. Now, I'm not going to open them all up, but this is where you should have them at your front counter. You can have a display stand similar to the image. Um, I would also recommend having a link on your website but these cover all of the different scenarios where a tenant can make an inquiry. So actually, I might just click on them. Oh, no, I'm going to have to open it up too. Okay, so the tenant inspection confirmation. This is, you've got a tenant that wants to look at some properties. Now, I know a lot of this is automated online. Um, but this is just if you had someone come into the agency, so they complete it, all the information, and you qualify the tenant at the same time. The next one is fairly straightforward. It's your tenant application. I'm not going to open that one up. You've got your notice to vacate. Now, there is a prescribed form in many states, whether it's a Form 11, Form 13, a termination notice, this form you would attach to your prescribed form or photocopy it to the back of it because this explains to the tenant their obligations and their responsibilities when they have to return keys, that you can erect a sign at the property, that you can show prospective tenants through the property. The next one is notice to break agreement, um, change of shared tenancy, Request, actually the change of shared tenancy, I might show you that one as well. You should all be using these at the moment and you'll find the forms, you'll find them under forms, tenancy renewals and tenant vacating. Now the importance of this change of shared tenancy and that's what the PPM system is, it's a solution, solution driven system. And we got feedback um, from property managers saying it was difficult at the end of the tenancy when there was a change in tenants coming halfway through because they were saying, well, that stain on the carpet was there before I moved in. 
I shouldn't be responsible for that. It shouldn't come out of my bond. It should just come out of the other tenant's bond, which made the whole process complicated. So we just put in a little disclaimer here that the new tenant entering into the property or into the agreement agrees that they accept the property as per the original condition report. Okay, the next one is your tenant register. So once again, completely up to you, but a tenant comes into your agency, or these can be printed out and put next to the receptionist or the leasing consultant, whoever takes the calls. But this is a tenant that's looking for a property at the moment that you don't have listed. So they just complete what it is that they're looking for, and then you can put it into your database. And then the last couple is your tenant maintenance request form, and then you've got your consumer tenant complaint form. So make sure you have those at front reception or as I said, on your website. Now what I'm going to step through fairly quickly is the allocated areas within your agency. And as I mentioned, different agencies utilize pigeonholes, filing cabinets, filing trays, um, the tiered racks or coloured folders. But what we do need to have an allocated area for is applications awaiting owner approval. Now you could probably, oops, you, depending on how, how many applications you process, you might just have them in a coloured folder and label them and have it on the tiered rack next to your workstation. Applications to be processed. Or you could be working in a little bit of chaos and just have everything in your work to be done tray. But my, I guess, concept of a work to be done tray is it's like an in tray. It comes in, then you do it, you delegate it, or you dump it. Or you put it into one of your allocated areas. New condition reports to be entered if you're not utilizing an app. Pending tenant accounts to be paid. Work requests awaiting an invoice. I know that that will be in your trust program. As I said, you embrace what you think will work in your agency and if you want to have it done electronically, let the others go. Maintenance, maintenance pending owner approval. That could be an email or a letter that's sent. You could have these actually sent up as subfolders, subfolders within your emails. I'm just putting that down to update that. I just thought of that then. Um, awaiting quotes or quotes sent to the owner. And it's really important that you do have an allocated follow-up area for this because maintenance is the highest risk area for a lawsuit against your agency. There have been landmark cases where it is not enough, it is not delivering duty of care just to send out a quote and hope the landlord will get back to you. You have to constantly pursue that owner and make notes that you're following up on the quote. Inspections to follow up. That could be you've gone and done routine inspections. Um, you did 10 for the day, but there was one that you couldn't access the property. Because often it's Murphy's Law, if you've got 100 properties, you might do 99 inspections in the year, or three times, or four times, or two times, but it's generally that one property that you forgot to inspect that'll come back and bite you on the bottom with something going wrong. Pending new management inquiries, once again, that can be in your tasking system, rental appraisal letters, bonds that need to be lodged, accounts to be paid, accounts that have been paid, work to be done, filing that has to be done. I know of some member agencies that ban filing cabinets in their, their, their office because it's you hold it, you file it. There's no catching up with filing at the end of the week. You do it as you go. Things to be collected and then your mail tray. Now with that as well, in the system under PPM setup, you've got tab templates and tray stickers. So 
if you wanted your filing cabinets to look really fancy and consistent, these have been set up. So you can just go in, type in for Blue Street, and that printed out. I mean, then you're going to be printing one out, cut it out. But you would cut it out, see here, the two of them, and fold it over. Two of them and fold it over, and it just makes it a little stronger and easier to slip in. Okay, the next one for allocated areas, and a lot of agencies use pigeonholes for this, and then they label the pigeonhole. So awaiting return of the tenant's condition report. We need, we don't want to file the tenant's envelope or the tenant's folder until it's been finalised with the return of the report. Tenants request to break lease. Tenants, tenancy renewals that need to be signed. Awaiting bond refunds, tribunal applications sent, tribunal hearing dates received, insurance claims sent insurance claims pending, a property that is pending sale or awaiting the return of a management agreement. Okay, the next one is we really should be using our electronic filing. So if we go to the system under electronic filing, you will see all of these manual folders. You can scan the information in See here, we've got oh, it's a New South Wales strata bylaws, body corporate bylaws, whatever it may be. But this is just a replica where officers said, Deb, we don't want folders, we don't want paper, we want everything electronic. But you need to be having an allocated area for your body corporate bylaws. Um, potentially put them in with an A to Z in building name. Contractor agreements file under company name. Management agreements. Now I'm a big believer, management agreements are the asset value of your business. And what a lot of agencies do is reviews or audits of their management agreements. One of the, the services that we offer is due diligence, where we go in and we assess the files. We look at the, the management agreements to make sure that they're valid. And generally, 30% of management agreements are invalid due to inconsistencies, not completed correctly, missing initials or missing signatures. So what I would recommend is if you're not scanning them all into the electronic filing, is have them in envelopes. Because if you ever go to sell your rent roll, you'll be super organized and prepared and it won't take as long to go through every individual folder. This is legislated in some states, you need to have a complaints register. And that would be that form I was talking about. Actually, I'll go back up. Um, this is your consumer tenant complaint form. So all complaints must be in writing. And it just explains the process. So once that's been completed, that will sit inside your complaints folder or you will scan it in to your electronic filing. Then we have some agencies that use the 1 to 31 notice and letter management folder. So in there is your 1 to 31 days of the week. And if you've got a termination notice or a breach notice, um, a rent increase or inspections, if you look under number nine and you flip it over, you can see all of the activities that fall due on that day to double check that the rent increase has been set up properly, to double check that you're following up, that the breach has been, um, has been remedied, to follow up any arrears notices that have gone out. And then the other folder is your KPI reports. But once again, these should all be electronic. And I, I show you how to electronically file your KPI reports in our KPI um, tutorial. Any advertising copy, I think, it's only local newspapers that some agencies still advertise in. Now, in talking about due diligence, where there's a lot of inconsistencies in documentation, I really encourage all of you to have an example folder of the key documents on how to complete it. It is your office 
policy. It's your go-to guide for how to complete a management agreement, a tenancy agreement, a condition report, a bond form, a landlord insurance claim, tribunal forms. You can even make little notes in red pen to explain it if you need to. Okay, then a lot of agencies like to have something visual depending on the space in their office. So I get asked, Deb, what would you suggest putting up on the whiteboard? So some examples and the whiteboard setup, if we go to procedures, office procedures, you've got your whiteboard set up, which is just a reflection of what you're seeing at the moment. So you could have up on there pending management, new management, loss management, tenants vacating, vacant properties, properties available, properties rented, tenants breaking agreements. So, I mean, that's a pretty huge board that you'd need to have. But remember, all of this is monitored on your KPI worksheets. Now, what some agencies do as well for their goal and target setting is they will have a touchdown. So whether that's for the month or the, for the year, completely up to you, but you would have a red pen and this is monitoring your growth, your new management. Um, if you're joining us for the very first time or you haven't attended any of my coaching sessions, one of the, I guess, philosophies that I train is it's not about numbers. We don't want 50 new properties because that means nothing. Because you can have 50 new properties at $100 per week rent or 25 properties at $200 a week rent. So double, the, double the, the rental, half the property, and it's generating the same management fee. So what this is saying is for the month, we want to write $4,000 in new management, which is just adding up the weekly rent. And then you've got your red pen touchdown. So Touchdown might be a team lunch, right down the bottom, whatever that goal is. So in closing, the last one is your record books for those that are still doing it manually, having advertising copy, postal book, key in and out book. But you do have those within the system as well in an electronic format under your register and report summaries. So key in and out register was requested a couple of years ago. It sits on the receptionist's desktop. And instead of the book, you just record when the keys are out, where are they, and when they come back. The same as with your report registers. You've got your key register that cross-references to your trust, your postal register, and your bank details register. And then the last one that you had in there, depending on whether it's legislated in your state, is your pool management register. In some states, Queensland, New South Wales, you have to have compliance pool certificates that needs to be registered with the, the governing council body. So on your checklist, there will be a link. And then at any time, you can come here and see all the properties that have pools and whether their certificates are current. So don't forget all of your, actually I'm just going to pop back in again. I'm going to close this down, open this up. Hello, I'm still here. So don't forget about all of your membership benefits. You get free access to my coaching sessions on a Tuesday. You can call us as many times as you like. Even if you think you know the answer and you just need that little bit of confidence or support, an email or telephone call away. You get your end of month landlord newsletter that you send out with your statements. Um, your tutorials, so there's a couple more tutorials if this is your first one today. And don't forget we've got our national conference coming up in about seven weeks as a member. You get 20 to 50% discount. Awesome lineup of speakers. Um, if you go into our members area as well, you'll see you've got some industry service provider discounts. Um, and that's also where we do our system updates. 
but I talk about system updates um, in the new staff and refresher training. So a big thank you for attending today. Have an awesome week and I look forward to hearing from you with your next question. Which process? Let the PPM group